Hello, my name is Aileen McClone, the National Library of Scotland's Web Archivist. The Archive of Tomorrow is a Wellcome Trust funded project to explore and preserve online health publishing led by the National Library of Scotland. Our partner institutions are Oxford University's Bodleian Libraries, Cambridge University Libraries and Edinburgh University. The British Library is an essential supporting partner in building this collection in the UK Web Archive, a partnership for legal deposit libraries of the UK. Under UK Legal Deposit, we may create web collections for access and library premises. This means the project must seek permission from owners to make copies available via webarchive.org.uk. The project has internal as well as external aims. It re-examines how we collect material published online, the questions we need to ask about how we do this to make it useful, and how we can improve our communication with audiences for this collection. Just to touch on the structure of the project, the project manager, Mary Garner, administrates meetings and project finances. The steering group, which includes all line managers, meets every month to coordinate and guide project staff. The advisory group track and guide project objectives. They, view, they review project documents like the collecting framework, project plan, media strategy, quality impact assessment and risk register. To show something about the geographic spread of our project staff, I've made a map. I'll outline each person's task. Jasmine Hyde, our rights officer, is examining the clarity of our communication and the benefit of legal deposit to the public. She's based at the National Library of Scotland. Her work is to build good relationships with publishers and promote better public understanding of the web archive. Our project metadata analyst is Mark Hayden. He's looking at metadata created by the project's web archivist in ACT, the annotation and curation tool which sets our crawls. These descriptions are not currently available, but the plan is to create a mapping to catalog records. He's drawing on work published by OCLC and an in-house scheme created by the National Library of Wales, another member of the UK Web Archive. Eddie Boyle, our software research officer, is looking at the UK Web Archive's API and datasets. He will develop existing projects and create new interfaces for researchers. James Waddle, the UK Research and Innovation Policy Intern, is a PhD student at AUCL. He is creating a questionnaire around legal issues and the project, as well as contributing to discussion around library policies. Finally, the project has three project web archivists, as Austin, based at Edinburgh University, Shui Shui at Oxford University's Bodleian Libraries, and Leontine Talbot at Cambridge University Libraries. They're researching to build collections and also engage with subject librarians and researchers. This project crosses institutions and aims to bring new perspective to bear on how we collect the web in UK legal deposit. However, the researcher is the inspiration for this project and it's the researcher who must lead to what methods are effective in their work. And with that, I hand over to Leontine and Alice. Thank you, Ailey. Um, so I want to look now at the collaborative approach that we've taken to how the collection has been developed. The framework that we've been using is based on a template by the University of North Texas's web archiving team. It's very comprehensive, covers everything from how material is going to be identified by whom, to what level of descriptive metadata is going to be used, and to how the success or otherwise of the collection will be evaluated. As Ailey said, we have a large team, um, and there have been nearly 30 people involved in some of these collection development discussions. Conversations like this often raise more questions than they settle. So working to this document has been a really useful way of, of guiding our conversations and keeping them focused. And it's provided us with a structured way to define our scope, intended audience and aims, and the approaches that we're going to take to achieve these. The document is stored in a shared location where any member of the project team can view, edit and comment on it. We've already had a number of meetings to discuss the shape of the collection, and we anticipate that these will continue throughout the project. 
there's an understanding that this is a fluid and evolving document that's there to inform and guide collecting rather than to restrict and prohibit it. I think working through this document together has pushed all of us to interrogate the assumptions that we were each coming to the project with and to expand our perceptions about what the final collection could look like. Although this project did grow out of the collecting COVID initiatives that sprang up at the start of the pandemic and originally was focused on collecting information and misinformation around COVID. Once we started to try and pin down the specifics of how we would do that, it became clear that actually COVID is just one aspect of a bigger picture of how people use the internet to find, share and discuss health related topics. So working together to hash out the details of the collection framework has really helped us to better articulate our intentions and aspirations. It's also helped us to take a very vast and somewhat nebulous subject area and start breaking it down into smaller, more manageable chunks. For example, here are the top level categories that we're working with at the moment. Each of these then expands further into subcategories. Um, so here are some of the subcategories that we hope to cover within a COVID-19 collection. Coming together to discuss this as a group means that we're able to identify different subject areas and topics that we might not have um, been able to identify if we were working individually. And working together as a group has also been really useful in helping us to think holistically about the collection through its entire curation life cycle, from selection and acquisition to access and rights management. Early on, we agreed, for example, that we wanted to collect um, the conspiracy theories that have sprung up around COVID. Because this content is liable to disappear as platforms try and keep a lid on, on potentially harmful information, we knew that this would have to be a priority area for capture. But because we're already thinking about access and how end users will encounter and understand the content, we're able to recognise that prioritising this material for collection poses a bit of a risk in that we risk jeopardising the representativeness of the collection if we inadvertently give more airtime to this kind of content than it would naturally receive in the real live web. So we've had to start thinking now about how we're going to communicate our sele selection decisions to the end user and what documentation we need to start doing now. We've also had to start thinking about how we navigate our own responsibilities, both legal and moral, as we're effectively becoming secondary publishers, making this content available in perpetuity. We've recently been discussing, for example, whether it's appropriate for us to put an embargo on some material or decide not to pursue a license for it to be made available in the Open Web Archive. These are considerations with any kind of web collecting, but I think especially when we're talking about health discourse, where we have individuals, say, disclosing details about their health, in contexts where they might not recognise them as publishing in the way that the legislation does. I think it's really important that we, we think about this at the start. And I think that's where the collaborative nature of this project and the team really shines. We're able to identify and talk through these potential issues at an early stage, and we're able to draw on a range of expertise, not just within the project team, but also across their respective institutions. Here at Edinburgh, for example, I'm looking forward to collaborating with um, researchers in the Edinburgh Futures Institute who are looking at ethical data collection. And with colleagues in the Asher Institute who are exploring online health networking. And that brings me to another goal of the project. Again, early on, it was recognised that the best way for us to build a collection that's going to be relevant and useful and research ready is to engage directly with our audience of potential researchers. So to this end, in April, we hosted the first of two workshops that we're going to be running as part of this project. These have a few different aims. Firstly, we want to advertise the potential of not just this collection in the UK Web Archive, but of Web Archives as a research tool more generally. We want to know what kind of research is being done, what research people want to do, and what the barriers to that research are. Um, we want to try and identify areas where this collection and the wider project aims might have some useful contributions to make. But we also wanted to invite researchers behind the scenes and give them an idea of the kind of conversations and considerations that go into producing a collection like this. As archivists and curators, we're aware that selection processes and procedures can have a big impact on the shape of the final collection. 
but we're not necessarily always so good at communicating those decisions. So we really wanted to get in front of some researchers and find out, you know, what do they want to know about these resources? What information about capture would improve their usefulness? To what extent should we be providing guidance on the content? For example, should we be flagging misinformation and disinformation where we find it? And what are we missing? We're not subject experts when it comes to health information, misinformation or online information behaviours. So we need to make sure that we're getting that input from our future end users and make sure we're heading in the right direction. There are other opportunities for collaborative working that we hope to explore in this project. I hope to work with other collecting institutions to integrate the work that we're doing here with other collecting initiatives around COVID and health. We also want to explore working with underrepresented communities and using participatory archiving practices to improve representation and inclusion in the web archive. So those are some of the benefits that we found. Um, of course, it would be remiss of me not to mention that there are challenges to this approach, some of which are familiar to anyone who has worked remotely over the last few years. So with four different institutions that each have their own policies and procedures, um, that obviously can be quite difficult sometimes. Um, for example, every organisation has their own hiring processes. So the project team didn't all start in, in role at the same time. And that was frustrating when we wanted to get underway with collecting, but didn't want to exclude anyone joining at a later date from being able to contribute to the development of the collection framework. Similarly, with four different institutions and four different computer systems, ensuring everyone has access to the same information as an OACC and coordinating diaries across those four institutions can be interesting. But I think if we can take the challenges and leverage them, for example, using this as an opportunity to revisit how we document um, our collection development processes, then these bumps in the road can become really valuable lessons learned for the future. So in summary, the collaborative nature of this project has enabled us to draw on a diverse range of perspectives and experiences. We've been able to interrogate each of our assumptions about what the intentions of the project and the collection are. And it's helped us to take a holistic view of the curatorial process so that we can see where our strengths and weaknesses lie and better identify where additional resources or a different approach might be needed. So thank you for joining us for this introduction to the Archive of Tomorrow project. Leontine, Ailey and I look forward to hearing your questions and talking with you further.